With all the LEGO X-Wing iterations over the years, they just can't get the front angles right, can they? The X-Wing Starfighter has a thinner nose and it grows in thickness as we get closer to the canopy. Also, the canopy has more like a triangular shape and has a real cutout here that does not really align with the whole body. There are mocks on the internet that got it right, like this Jerax design at the Brick Vault store. And as LEGO has proven just recently, they can get some crazy angles done right with the right techniques. Just hire Mike Psiaki for every project like this. This one is still as straight as a road in Arizona. I mean, it really just doesn't add any flair to it, which in my opinion makes the set boring. And it's a sad thing to say because I'm probably gonna get it because I've been waiting for an X-Wing in UCS form for a while. I haven't got any of the other ones because those are my Dark Ages. And this one, I'm gonna get, but I, I don't very much like it. <laughs> the X-Wing is coming on May the 4th with VIP early access for May 1st. 240 bucks. Yikes. That hurts. No, seriously, gone are the times when we had a UCS Starfighter for $199.99. Sad. The piece count is not also very impressive. At least it should be over 2000 for such a price tag, but it's not. 1949. The minifigs are Luke, obviously, Red 5 Luke and R2, which looks surprisingly uh, tiny and just funny hiding behind the cockpit. Completely doesn't make sense here. I thought they would make maybe like a brick build R2 for this scale. He's way too small. The minifigure of R2 is way too small for this cockpit. And to the, add to the list of complaints, I don't like the box art. There, I said it. It looks pretty bland and boring. It's just, I think the angle is not very flattering for the X-Wing. It's such a cool looking starfighter. You can get better angles for this. And also there is something off with the lighting. It almost looks like a render put on a black uh, surface and also that galaxy in the background trying to kind of give some contrast to the ship. Uh, there is something off with it. Might be one of the worst looking UCS black boxes I've seen as of recently. Yeah, certainly doesn't look good in my eyes. All right, but what do I like? Well, the uh, proportions of the engines compared to the body. The X-Wing is a ship that has gigantic engines. So other models from the past did not really capture uh, that kind of um, proportion in that regard. Let's take a look at the X-Wing from the past. I think that's the most latest iteration. So as you can see, the proportion of the engine intakes uh, against the body is much worse than in the new one. So that's a good thing. And also that angle <laughs> was as straight as a road in Arizona, as I said, it was the same thing. So they didn't even improve on that. At this scale, really, you should be able to find ways to get that angle for the canopy here and get that kind of converging point onto the nose where the nose becomes thinner in the front. I, There is no excuse to not have the accuracy for such a 23 build, especially that we had so many amazing models not that long ago that captured fantastic angles. I was showing the Galaxy Explorer for a good reason. The blaster build is decent. They use the fins in here, so that's pretty nice. I don't know exactly how the mechanisms for the wings will work. The gribbling on the top is somewhat also questionable. I just don't know if it looks good. The cockpit is nice. I believe we have... No, those are stickers. I can tell these are stickers. Not sure about this piece, so we'll have to see. And again, as you can see, the, the size of the pilot's seat compared to the R2 in the back, like it's super oversized. R2 just in that format, in the minifigure format, does not fit right in the back of the X-Wing. The shape from the rear is done right. It's kind of an interesting detail here that you have the Nexonite shield pieces that once locked, once the S-Falls are locked, they kind of converge on each other. So they're gonna look pretty good in the locked position. I wonder if there's a picture showing it in the locked position from the back. I don't think there is one. So we're gonna have to wait and see, but yeah, that's a pretty cool looking uh, look, display look for the S-Falls closed, but I really wanna see the back once the s faults are closed. We don't really get that picture, so I wonder how it's gonna look like. It looks good on the stand. The stand is, I think, doesn't really go far from what we got in the Y-Wing in the past, in the A-Wing Starfighters. I don't think it's angling at any in any way. There's just a Technic cross axle that keeps it secure, so I don't think you're gonna be able to change an angle. I believe that it's designed in a way exactly that the X-Wing is somewhat kind of canting uh, forward, um, so it's kind of like pointing upwards as if it was going, you know, to the higher altitude, which is cool. Like, I, I like the fact that it's not just flat out 
X-Wing, uh, but it's it's more like, a, you know, dynamic pose, I, I would say. I wonder if you're going to be able to kind of uh, tilt the X-Wing to the to like banking left or right. That would be very cool, but I don't think the, the mount here allows for that. So I'm not, I wouldn't hope too much on that, but it would be cool nevertheless. They could have done that. At that scale, they totally could have done that. Also, one of the details I'll notice is the uh, different design, like stripes design uh, and the red five markings, of course, for look but stripes design on the lower blaster here and the upper blaster here, which is a nice attention to detail, I gotta say, and also printed canopy. So we have printed canopy, but I believe, again, the cockpit elements seem like they are stickers. Oh, and one more important thing, I think we're getting a printed plaque. Um, and there was like, is there a shot of the printed plaque? Uh, yeah, so like, this is the closest I could get, but it's, it's kind of like, you don't see the edges of the sticker, so maybe, Finally, uh, they're following suit after the Ferrari Daytona and the UCS set for the first time ever is getting a printed plaque. So that's nice. There is one more look on that upward angle. Pretty cool. And we can just, you know, I like to compare when there's a person. Pretty cool environment. They use their, like, you know, lifestyle shots here. But you can see how significant the Starfighter is. It's big, but it's nothing. It's not like bigger or smaller than the other former UCS X-Wings. It's good that it has a comeback, really, if I have to sum this all up. But it's kind of like a bitter sweet, somewhat of a comeback. I don't know, I, I just feel this way. All in all, I gotta tell you guys, I'm a little bit disappointed. And you know why? Because we've been spoiled by the quality of 23, like 2020's designs of LEGO. You know, there have been so many new elements introduced, so many more uh, AFOL related models, like, you know, the comebacks of the Nostalgics, like again, the Galaxy Explorer, like we had the castles of our era. We had so many other models that the cars keep coming out and all like all of them seemed to be somewhat of an improvement over if they had any former versions in the past. This doesn't seem like an improvement. That's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, if I'm a guy, an AFOL, who is who missed all the other X-Wings, like especially this one from the past, I missed out on I was in my dark ages, I didn't get it. Uh, that's the closest, you know, that's the last UCS X-Wing. Um, so I was I was eagerly waiting for this one, and apart from the fact that it does have better proportions for the engines, I don't see many or improve many more improvements. I really hoped that with the new elements and more attention to detail that Lego has proven time and time again in 23, we would get that cutout for the canopy. We would get that converging nose. Also, the nose build seems way too beefy for the X-wing. Like. It's, it's, it's much more sleek. It's more like an arrowhead for the actual Starfighter. And, and here we don't have that arrowhead feel. It's, it's, it's like a bulky, more like a design for ramming other starships than just cutting through space, you know, and intercepting other TIE fighters. Uh, it doesn't look that way. I think the nose is too bulky. Just the whole, the, the wing section is fantastic, okay? The engine wing section is fantastic. The whole nose section is way too thick feels way too bulky, it, it almost doesn't feel like an X-Wing. And also the gaps here, nasty glaring gaps I just noticed here. So, you know, like with all they could have done for a 23 model, I'm disappointed. And it's again, bittersweet because I wanna get it. I really wanna get it. Like this is the, the closest I've gotten to an UCS X-Wing. I wasn't lucky enough to get like at the Christmas employee gift, Lego employee X-Wing. So this is the one I want, but also I don't if that makes sense. I could ramble on and on, but let me know in the comment section what you think. Is that a disappointment? Is that the X-Wing we uh, deserve? Is that the X-Wing we're waiting for? <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.